Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Well, um, Frankie Shane and Katie Lane, and we are here with another Facebook Live event, yes. uh, prospecting. So this one um, is going to be another interesting one. Can you guess who titled it? <laughs> this guy. Yeah, me. <laughs> I blame it on uh, on creative writing in yeah. college as well as uh, English comp because right. you know you have to title your research papers and things, and they want you to get into something, but they want to have something interesting. Right. That's and what it does. It goes like this. Yeah. Yeah. It just hooks you in. Mm -hmm. Now, nowadays, though, we don't. Back then, it was just called, um, oh, what was the word? It, intriguing and mm. engaging titles yeah. so that people are like, hmm, makes you think. Huh? Nowadays, we call it clickbait. Oh, yeah. Because people will put a title on a video. They'll put a title on something. And it, you're like, whoa, I'm going to check that out. Right. Then you go there, and it's not quite what you think. Right. Most times it's but not. But here, you're getting exactly what you think. Yeah. Well, you're, you're more getting, than what you bargained for. <laughs> you're getting the goods. Yeah. Okay. It's not all it's not all style or substance yeah. here so what do i mean by snakes in the playground okay well first off when you think of a playground what do you think of think of fun yeah you think of carefree yeah. you think of you're there and you don't have to worry about anything you're there just to kind of be yourself and do things but if there's snakes in the playground that changes everything yeah because now you're on guard now the place that you've enjoyed and and what made you feel carefree now it becomes this Here. thing where you're constantly on edge and yeah. on your toes. So when I say snakes and playground, what I'm referring to is negativity within your group, negativity within your life, negativity within the relationships around you, surrounding your involvement in a home-based business. Yeah. So a lot of leaders um, get this question from people in their group. We get it all the time. Mm -hmm. People are constantly saying, well, you know, I really want to do this. It takes an investment of my time and my money and my family has seen me do this before and they are totally against it. Right. They are telling me, don't you dare do it. Yeah. Don't you dare ask us about it. Don't you dare try and prospect any of us. When we go to family gatherings, we don't want to hear about it. No one wants to hear about it. No one's going to buy your stupid vitamins. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. That is a snake in the playground. Yeah. Because this is something that you've taken on as your livelihood. It's something you've taken on that you want to do, you're passionate about. You feel and you understand the legitimacy of a product and of a company like this. And you want to make the best go of it. And in the midst of that, in the midst of that passion, people that you care about are telling you, no. I want nothing to do with nothing it. Nothing to do or with you. it. Or you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that whole not this again attitude. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. We're also going to talk about when you're prospecting, you're going to run into those objections as well. Right. People say, well, I tried Amway mm. or I tried Forever Living or I tried Old World, Shack, any company, even our company, name any company out there. I'm not pointing out particular companies are just ones that come to mind right. first, but any company out there, people say, been there, done that, spent money, got excited, went to conventions, spent money there, never got anywhere. Right. I'm done. I'm burnt out. This is, it doesn't work. It's not real. Not, I'm not interested. Right. So again, someone crushing your dreams, a snake in the playground. Mm -hmm. So there are several different ways and diff different types of scenarios where this comes into play. Now, one of the worst case scenarios of that is when you've built a business and people within your business who are struggling to become successful start becoming negative yeah. and they start spreading it to other team members or they start, you know, making it on uh, you know, putting their concerns out in a public forum where people can see it and then people become concerned about it. Right. Okay. That's another form of a snake in the playground. Someone who is trying to get in there and trying to kind of spoil the batch, yeah. spoil a whole bunch. Okay. So now there, there are lots of ways to deal with this. Now, first off, the first thing you need to do is deal with it in, within yourself and understand that these people are generally speaking out of their own experiences. They're speaking out of their own um inner struggles and it's nothing it's not a, a commentary on you personally right it's a commentary on their experience and you being the one asking them about it you're representing you're opening that old scar up you're opening that wound back up so they attack you not because you're the one at fault but because you're the one that brought back the memory of this is why i hate this type right. of marketing okay yeah um 
So I hope that you understand that. You understand that? Totes. You get it? Okay, totes. <laughs> oh, it's always great. Uh, <laughs> the generational gap is so obvious. Uh, but I'm learning here. It's great. Uh, so, uh, that was rad. <laughs> rad. There yeah, you go. There you go. Right on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, that's one of the first things you need to do when dealing with this type of negativity or these type of oppositions or you know people in a in a position to be on the attack of you the first thing you understand is their attack 99 percent of the time has nothing to do with you right now especially when you're talking about prospects or you're talking about people that are acquaintances of acquaintances type of thing they don't even know you right so obviously it's not about you but it's about their opposition to maybe what you represent. And yeah. so you need to understand that first. So getting your own perception right about what's going on is the first step. Because if you don't get past that first, then it doesn't matter the rest of what I'm going to tell you. You're, all, you're going to take it personal either way. Right. So you have to understand, first off, that when people come off negative, when people do these things, even if there's someone you do personally know and you do have a relationship with and they're being negative or spreading negative about you, Still, that says nothing about you. Right. It says something about where they're at. Yeah. So let's get that straight right out of the gate. That needs to be understood that first. Means. Right. <laughs> I bet. Uh, okay. So, um, so what you want to do first is you want to understand that when you're doing these things, that you take yourself out of it. Okay. And we've we've taught this principle not only in our training but also in the in the other training the girls have had that it's not about you when you're prospecting. It's, it's about meeting the needs of the person on the other end. Right. It's about understanding what their passion is, what they're needing, what they want out of this, and then addressing that right. and catering to that. So with that same mindset, that's what you need to do here to separate yourself from that negativity. The right. first step in separating yourself from that negativity is understanding it's not about you. Right. Okay. Not everything is about you. So that's okay. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that that takes <laughs> that's freeing because it takes some of that responsibility right. of that out of out of your hands and off of your shoulders. Yeah. For so sure. back to my old school pen and, and paper and here. <laughs> so relatives is one, team members is another, um, prospects is another. Okay. Um, so again, you know, relatives a lot of times it's like, oh, not this again, don't bring this up. You know, that can be, and that can be a real buzzkill. Right. You know what that word means? Yes. I okay. Do. <laughs> that can be a real buzzkill because, you know, they're your family. Right. They're supposed to love you and support you. And they, and I'm sure they do. But when they're that adamant about don't even bring this up, I mean, I've, I've been to functions with people whose family have flat out told them, okay, don't bring this up. Don't talk about this. This is a family gathering. No one wants to hear about your business. Right. <laughs> and you can see their face drop. You know, yeah. it's like, wow, you know, okay. But, you know, there's been a lot of bridges burned in families due to network marketing let's, yeah. or any type of home-based business, let's face it. And it's generally because people get passionate about the wrong things. They don't do their research and they get into something that maybe had they done a research, they may not have. And then they're getting people... People, a lot of times when they're family or close friends that get into a business, they get into it, as we mentioned on one of our other calls, they get into it because of you, right. not because of business. Like, well, if you're doing it, it must be pretty good. And you seem excited about it. So yeah, I'll join you. And then when it goes south for you and it goes south for them, you're responsible. Yeah, there's, there's a bad taste in their mouth mm -hmm. and, and they're not going to trust you the second right. time around. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Right. Okay, so that's what people think. They're like, okay, you fooled me once. Eh, that was your bad, but you're not doing it again because I'm smart enough not to do it the second time. Right. So, um, you know, so they've invested um, things based on your relationship with them and it's got burnt. So, you know, again, though, don't take that personal, you know, especially if you got burnt too. It's not like you right. meant to burn them. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you lost as well, but you still believe in the systems. Yeah. Which um, actually... We have a strategy on how to be able to do that. You have to swallow your pride a little bit, but yep. there is a strategy on how to reapproach a mm -hmm. burnt out warm market. Right. Um, and that's coming in our warm market training that we yes. are currently working on. And you guys will be the first to know because yeah. you'll find out on these. Um, Cause chains. little miss social media will let you know. Right. I got you guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's our social media queen, our social media maven. Ooh, there you go. Ooh, loving like it. That. Loving cool. it. Okay. So, um, so how do you combat negativity? 
Okay, now this is stepping outside of step one, which is to first understand and separate yourself from it. That's not about you, okay? Nine times out of 10, when people are having a negative thought or saying something negative to you, it's a, it has to do with them, something right. they're struggling with, something they're you know not happy with or whatnot. Um, it doesn't directly affect you, or, or I shouldn't say affect you. It doesn't directly come from you or right. come from a personal problem with you. Now, sometimes it may, but even in that, you know, really it still boils down to they're being the ones on the attack. Right. You haven't attacked them. So, um, okay. So again, that's step one in dealing with negativity, dealing with that snake in the playground is first off, find out if it's poisonous or not. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really work. Anyway. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that combat negativity in people, whether it be people in your family, whether it be people in your team, uh, especially if it's people in prospecting, your team in prospecting, this probably applies to even more. Um, and that is to give them testimonials of how this company has worked, how this product has worked, how right. things do work, how, yeah, it's, it's a tough road. We all know that it doesn't happen overnight. It's not something that just, you don't just add water to this business and boom, you've got this money tree. It doesn't work that way. Right. You have to spend time and effort into it. But give them testimonials of how you've seen it work, either for you personally, even if it's small, to, it doesn't have to be, look at me, I'm making a million dollars, but hey, I've tried every other company and never made a dime. I got a check for a hundred bucks. That, that's the most I've ever made a company. And it's getting bigger. It's getting right. better. As my line's growing, that's going to go up. I once talked to a man. This is an interesting uh, little side note here. I once talked to a man early on in, in professional networkers. I mean, I, at this point, I just started working the phones as someone that was doing like maintenance calls to our downline. I wasn't a consultant yet, not a full-fledged consultant, but I was learning. And I talked to this man and he, I called him and I just checked up on him, said, hey, you know, with professional networkers, we're part of your upline, just wanted to touch base with you, you know, see how things are going, see if there's anything you need, um, see if your, your product order has been going through okay, if you had any difficulty there that we can assist you with the company. And uh, the guy goes, man, I'm so glad you called. And I'm like, oh, great. And he's like, he goes, I want you to know, I've been with company after company after company, seen some great products, great pay plans. And he goes, and this is the first time ever that I've ever made any money in a company. Wow. And I was like, that is amazing. He goes, yeah, I got my first check. It was $12.50. And I go, $1,250? He goes, no, it was $12.50. What? And I said, Okay. And he said, you don't understand. He said, I've never made a cent wow. with any other company. That guy stayed in, I don't know how many years. By the time he was done, he was making really okay. good money. But for him to get his first check, uh, and it took him, I think he said it was, it was like 90 days he'd been in yeah. and he got one or two people, one or two customers in. That's right. what it was. So he got a, he got a commission check for $12 and 50 cents. And he was just in there. He was just elated that, that, so that cool. I got $12 and 50 cents. And that's, I'll never forget that story. Cause yeah. to me, I was, I was thinking the guy was saying I made $1,250. Right. It was not, it was $12 and 50 cents. So even for that guy, that $12.50 bonus right. or that $12.50 $12 commission check, that was his testimony, but yeah. he was excited about it. Yeah. And even though to most people are like, well, you made 1250, you spent 50. Right. He's like, but you I've never understand. made anything. And yeah. I did it in 90 days and I've already started seeing money. So the testimonials don't have to be someone taking a product and growing a finger that they lost back. Right. <laughs> it doesn't have to be something where, you know, in just one month, I'm able to buy a new car. It doesn't have to be that. The testimonials, it's, it's, about, it's about the motivation and it's about the inspiration that it can give you and give someone else. That's mm -hmm. what the testimony is about. It's not about all of the particular factors of the testimony right it's the fact that it's something you feel good about you feel yeah. thankful about that takes us to a principle that it is almost impossible to be negative when you're being thankful for something yeah when you're thankful in the midst of something it combats negativity yeah so that's a sense where the testimony has a twofold purpose because not only is it helping them to overcome the objection of why they don't like this when they can say oh well it's working for some of it also gives you, it reinforces to you that, hey, I'm thankful about this thing. Right. And I want to share that with people. So testimonials of whether it be making 
money, whether it be the product working, that's a very strong one. Yeah. And that's one that a lot of people in our business can relate to is using the product and seeing it work. Um, the company, the fact our company has been around for 23 years. Our flagship product is still our number one selling product. It's still right. a flagship. It's still untouched virtually right. in the in entire industry. No one's been able to really you know, work with it at the same level. There's right. been no other copycat transfer no factors. Copycat. Yeah, yeah. There, there's been people, you know, there was one for a while called something factor and something transfer. And they were trying to use, ride the shirt tails of what our product was mm -hmm. and get people to buy the product. But their product had, was here and gone. I mean, like I don't even- Sawdust compared to- Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was just fillers and it wasn't, it wasn't good. Um, so our company has, has been able to, for 23 years, keep our products at the top of their game without any copycats. We've been able to continue building on the science that our company originally started with. We have an entire line of products. All of those things are testimonies to what this company is doing. Mm -hmm. Testimonies to the legitimacy of the products. Testimonies to what we have that is so unique from everything else out there. Another thing is transferring credibility. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And we also have that coming in the warm market and cold market. <laughs> oh, shameless local, plugs. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> the local market training. So be sure to be like, have your eyes and your ears open. Right. So when we announce that it's ready, you can take advantage of these trainings because that is why we're here is to make your job easier as a right. growth affiliate. And so tra transferring credibility is a principle that you should learn to master, mm -hmm. master mm -hmm. it, because that is literally, I, it's talked about before, taking your own experience and using it. That's one thing mm -hmm. that's, you know, using your own testimony. You can use other people's testimonies, like she right. was saying, but transferring credibility takes it from trust me, trust my word right. to trust the facts. Trust exactly. me, literally this data, right? You know, <laughs> the data uh, never lies. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know, and that's another that's another segue, a great segue, uh, into the next thing that helps with combating negativity. Okay, uh, testimonials is always going to be a good one. It's going to be solid. You can choose, or you know, even get a hold of us, whatever, to find the right kind of testimonials. Like I said, there are testimonials on people with earning potential. There's testimonials all over the place. And probably you have some personally with the product. There's testimonials about the company and how our company has thrived in 23 years. We've continued almost the entire time. I'd say always the first few years of companies out there kind of operating right. in the red. But once our company started picking up some momentum, they have continually broke records, sales records every year, um, almost every month within each year consecutively, it just continues to build. That's a very, very strong testimony for the company. Right. I mean, for a company to be doing that is when a lot of companies by this time don't even make it 20 years. Right. Our companies continue to, to go forward. So that's one. But the segue that she just so graciously lobbed out there for me to grab onto was systems. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Another great thing about our company that helps to combat this negative uh, idea of network marketing not working or this negative uh, perception that this is just another one of those companies where right. it's going to be hard is that we offer systems and tools and training that you won't find anywhere else. Right. And these systems and tools give you the best possible opportunity of anyone else out there to be successful. Right. Because just as Caitlin said, we're doing the homework for you. Mm -hmm. It's it's like cheating off someone's test. <laughs> we've done the homework. We've done the reading. We've done the research. We've done all of that. And what we're giving you on a silver platter is here's what you need to do to take advantage of this industry. Right. That's what we're doing. So another way to combat all of this negativity, whether it be from family, because even family, if they're saying, well, I'm not going to do this again, don't even talk. Well, this is different. Yeah, they're all different. No, no, no. I'm telling you, there's no one else doing what this is doing. Right. I can offer support. I can. They're helping me in ways that no one else has ever helped me. It's always been here, sign up. I'm going to help you. And then they disappear and you're left to your own devices. Right. We've done all the homework. We can help you. And it's all absolutely free. Right. All of our services, all of our training, all of our calling, all those things are free. The only cost to you is the cost of materials. Right. And since so much of it's virtual, mm -hmm. there's no cost there even. Right. You know, and if you want the postcards, 10 cents a piece for a double-sided, full-color, glossy postcard. I mean, 
10 bucks for 100. And the ability to download the press quality version of the postcard and take it to a local printer if you want to, if yeah. they have cheaper prices. Yeah. If you say, well, I can get it done cheaper than that. Maybe you know a printer, maybe you are a printer. We've talked to people who were in the printing business said, well, if you can send me the files, I can print them myself. And we've sent them the file. This was before we had you know, right. the websites and we would send them the file through email. Yeah. And so, I mean, th these are things we try to make available to you at the lowest possible cost so that you can spend the money in building your business and not spend it all in advertising, mm -hmm. you know? So that's another great thing that will help combat the negativity people have towards this type of industry. Because many times when they're frustrated with the industry, they're frustrated because they've gotten involved and been left to figure things out themselves and it never works. Right. Um, when someone's brand new, let's say it's your first time in network marketing, you've never done it before. And suddenly someone sells you exactly the, the dream of network marketing, build your own business, work from home, have residual income. That sounds amazing. They make it sound as though it's just turnkey. It's so easy. Right. You sign up, they disappear. Yes. Because the name of the game traditionally is you just keep moving. Right. And the ones that are real go-getters, you work with them, the rest of them, Let them they're sacrificial up. lambs. Right. You just keep going. Um, but with us, that's different because yeah. you get involved and someone says, well, yeah, I'll help you. But right now I've got a meeting or I'll help you, but I've got this other leader and they keep okie doking you. Meanwhile, you're losing ground right. with us. That doesn't happen right. because you plug into us and you're like, well, let them do their own thing. I can build with the tools you guys are giving me. And we literally give them to you. Yeah. You so, have triple tier support, triple tier. That's right. And that's not this kind of tier. No. <laughs> okay, so. It does make you cry because of how awesome yeah. it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, um, but the, but the systems that we give you help to counter the negativity that people are going to put towards yeah. this type of industry or this type of opportunity or, oh, no, not again. It's not a no, no, not again. This is unlike any other chance that you've ever had. It's giving you the best opportunity. Um, another thing that you need to do with negativity now, this goes more to when you have some sort of relationship with these people, whether they be a prospect that you've worked on and now you have kind of a rapport with them, mm -hmm. whether it be a leader already within your group, whether it be family members or people in your warm market that you're exposed to on a one-on-one -on -one basis, is you need to help understand that the negativity <clears throat> that they are bringing, that if you allow that negativity to get into your mind, your thoughts, and you begin to become negative yourself, the dangers in that and what it can do to your entire business. Right. Okay. Um, because it, it can, this is why I said the first step is to separate yourself from the negativity on your own and understand right. that this is not about me, that they're feeling negative. They're feeling negative because of their past experiences, but they don't, they're projecting it towards me because I happen to be bringing up something right. that they've had a bad experience with, but it's not about you personally. Um, if you can master that part, then this, this one I'm talking about here may not be as big of a deal. Right. But if you're someone who after a while, it starts to wear on you, you start to think, well, you know, they're negative about this. And I really haven't, haven't launched yet. I mean, right. I'm, I'm still kind of in the pre-phase. I've got a customer or two, but you know, they're inconsistent in orders and I feel like I'm having a hard time. That negativity can, can literally from the inside out, begin to tear your business apart. Right. And when you have leaders in your business who are negative, uh, towards other individuals or, you know, you do zoom meetings and they bring up negative all the time. They're not, they're never talking about how good the business, is, but they're always asking about, well, this is going wrong. That's going wrong. Right. And, and I, you know, I'm not getting ahead. I wasted money. You said it would work. It didn't. Work. Those types of things, when you allow that type of negativity to take hold in your business, it becomes like a festering yeah. boil. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And it can cause all kinds of backlash that's going to hurt your business, going to help your hurt your growth, going to hurt your motivation. Right. It's going to hurt your overall um, mentality towards it. And then you become negative and you start thinking, maybe I can't do it. Maybe this right. doesn't work. And it begins to feed on the fears that you have. And those fears then become, in your eyes, your perception become realities. And then you start thinking, well, maybe this is the wrong move. Right. So you have to be uh, vigilant about making sure that you understand that this negativity that people are bringing when they're in these situations is more about their experience and less about you. Yeah. And their experience is not your experience. We're all different. We all have different ways, different perceptions of things. 
but you can't allow that to take hold in your business right because it's it's deadly it's it's deadly we've seen it time and time again we've seen leaders come in into the business who um who try different things we you know we've had co-ops in the past that you know have not performed up to the par that our average ones would right and it would just happen to be the day the time of the year might happen to be the particular circulation that those went out to that that right. month all kinds of things but they would take that one bad experience and then they would build on that and say well this stuff just doesn't work i'm having a hard time i'm not gonna hit and you can't allow that it's it's about consistency right it's about staying consistent staying active keeping things moving because it's a law of averages out there as it is with anything even right. re even retail businesses even conventional businesses it's it's a gamble you know i mean you have to the factors have to line up right. There's a lot of companies that started five years ago that are out of business today mm -hmm. because they couldn't get right. I'm talking about conventional businesses even. And so, you know, you can't allow that negativity to, to uh, take hold in your thinking. You can't allow it to take hold in your group because it just continues, it spreads so quickly. Right. I also you know? feel like something that's really important is to be secure in your understanding that this company is the right company for you exactly because that's a great point that is going to be almost the core to everything that you do mm -hmm. starting from when you enroll to prospecting because if right. you don't truly believe that this is the company for you if you don't truly believe that this is the perfect company that all the success factors that are involved in a company's success that for life fits each of those like a mm -hmm. puzzle piece and that for life success it's not just for life success but it's also your own personal success and the success of your team if you don't truly understand that and take that to heart then you prospecting and bringing people on your team that there's no genuine heart behind that right. there's no solid nothing to stand on Right. When the obstacles and the negativity comes to you, when you put your money in, because it's understandable when you put money out to get and you mm -hmm. get nothing because of the variables that go into advertising, right. that it would shake you up. It's, right. it, it's understandable. But if you have an understanding and are secure in the fact that this is the perfect company for you and this the products do work for you and you right. have seen people have success you know you can have success then when that thing those things happen to you you know maybe you'll shake for a minute and you'll be like i got this you right. know there's so many avenues available to you for advertising if your war market is burnt out and you don't feel like going after them you don't have to go right. after them. Don't <laughs> go after, go get some cold calling leads. Now, here's the thing. I feel like <laughs> if an avenue you're going for does not work out, you have to be open to using other avenues. You also have to be open to mastering those other avenues because mm -hmm. approaching your war market might have the same base principles as doing postcards, you know, the understanding you need to have with the opportunity, how you're going to present things, but postcards are a whole different world than war <laughs> right. marketing oh, is. Absolutely. So you have to be willing to go with another avenue, no matter what it is. Obviously, postcards, like we talked about last training, are rejection proof. Right. You send them out. If people don't want them, you know, you don't hear about it. If right. they do want it, they contact you with mm -hmm. something like cold calling. It's that's it's very, very personal. <laughs> yeah, very, very personal. So you have to disconnect yourself again mm -hmm. from the rejection that comes to you and just realize that every avenue that you're going down is going to have its own obstacles and its own form of rejection. And you have to just be okay with it. Be willing to experiment, I feel like would be mm -hmm. a good idea yeah. and give each avenue a chance. And again, if you if you can grasp the whole idea that any negative you feel in any of these avenues is not about you, that it's about the experiences of the other person and and you come at them almost like a pillow, right. you know, you're willing to take a little bit to get a little bit, so right. to speak, um, then these different avenues, it's really 
you can find your niche, right. you know, because maybe cold calls is better for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're your person that's got a great voice. You're great on the phone. Maybe postcards are better for you. Right. You won't know that. So you try these different avenues. Yeah. It's one of the reasons we created so many systems is regardless of where a person's strength or weakness is at, we have something to cater to that. Right. And that's what's so unique about it. So, um, yeah, that's a great point. It's a great point. And we talked about this beforehand. We're like, well, some of this is going to be kind of interesting how it's going to go. And so once we get going, we always play yeah. well off each other. We spark thoughts in each other's mind. Yes. Um, so, and the last thing here, um, which is, looks like time-wise, we're about right, is, now this is a big one. Find out if the concerns that they have are legitimate. Mm. Okay, how many times does someone come at you and they're like, well, this is that, this is no, and they have this list of objections. And then as you start talking with them, you, you are able to give a rebuttal to every one of them and prove that it was, they were, talking hearsay or they were right. they were getting wrong information or they're misinformed and then it kind of takes a wind out of sales i don't know if, it's kind of satisfying for you yeah <laughs> but it, like but you it. see that look in their eyes like wow I, I was really should have looked into this a little more right. you know so find out if if the concerns they have are legitimate you know there are some companies out there that people say well this company did that and they scam or whatever and you might have already heard of that company you might say well yeah i mean if they were under investigation, it was found that they were doing this and this and this, right. and, you know, that was public knowledge. If you looked at it, yeah. our company has been around for 23 years and none of this has ever happened to us, you know? So find out how legitimate their concerns are. Cause sometimes people argue for the sake of arguing. Mm -hmm. And if it's one of those types of situations, sometimes in, with those people, no matter what you say, right, it doesn't matter. They're going to oppose you. And though sometimes I've let people off the hook when I know that that's the case. And I'll say, right. you know what, you know, you're right. I appreciate your time, but it just sounds like this isn't the right opportunity for you. Yeah. And, and it doesn't sound like this is something you're interested in. So I, I thank you for your time and, and, and go. Now, the funniest thing that happens is that there have been times when you tell people, no, they want like, what you on. got more. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden they want to know what you're like, well, wait, why are you letting me off the hook so easy? Mm -hmm. And, and it's simply because, you know, what's the point in arguing with them? Right. You know, it's, it's, if they've already made up their mind that this is not real and they're not interested, but yet they argue the point, then, I mean, they've already made up their mind. You're not going right. to change their mind. So, but I've had that happen before where people have just opposition after opposition and I can refute every one of them. And then finally, I just get to the point, I realize they're just not going to, Right. they're just interested in trying to, for a, a fight, so to speak. And so I've said, you know what, I, I sure appreciate your time. And, and, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, the answers I've given you don't seem to be enough. And, and uh, but, you know, I, I hope you find something that works for you, but right. this, this isn't the right opportunity for you. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. And then when I go to hang up, they're like, well, whoa, whoa, wait a second. So how much does it cost to get started? You know, or what is the lead product? Or, you know, they start yeah. asking questions about some of the very things that they had a problem with at yeah. the beginning of the call. And I've had, I've actually signed people up that way. Not very many, but I've signed a few people up that way where I was ready to get, get them off the phone. I right. was just like, this is going nowhere. And yet when I tried to tell them no, and that we're done, they would, they want to argue that. So then yeah. all of a sudden they end up signing. <laughs> right. you know, so, um, but find out how legitimate their concerns are, because sometimes people, um, you know, they, their concerns are based on, you know, just the, the public, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, just the public here say the public murmuring, and it's not really anything legitimate. Yeah. They're just going by what they heard someone else had heard that told them whose second cousin told them. You know, it's right. one of those things, just that, that gossip line and people are all of a sudden like, well, this must be true because I've heard it so many times, but there's no truth to it at all. Um, and sometimes people just misunderstand. I've had people say, well, oh, well, yeah, I don't want this because um, it sounds like a great product, but I'm lactose intolerant. Right. So, I can't have this because it comes from a cow. Well, that's a misunderstanding because people who are lactose intolerant can take transfer factors. There's no uh, lactose in it. It is actually removed completely from the colostrum. All it is is the molecule. You can't be allergic to the molecule. You no, can't you be allergic can't to the information. Yeah. There's none of that. So people who are lactose intolerant have had no issues with taking transfer factor. Mm -hmm. um, people who have certain allergies have no issues taking transfer factor. But people will come misinformed and they'll yeah. come at you with an opposition and you find out that it's not really legitimate. They're right. assuming something. So finding out, you know, if the concerns or if the negativity or if their attacks have any legitimacy to them is another way to combat it. Because when you can 
when you know that we have a support team like we have and the information is so available to you, it's easy to refute a lot of this stuff. You can just look it up. Right. You know? um, but if ever you run into a situation where you feel like someone is a good prospect, but they have a lot of opposition, you know they're going to be kind of a tough nut to crack, but they're still in play, just get a hold of us. And yeah. myself or one of our other consultants will be more than happy to answer the questions or even go on three-way with you and just nip it in the bud right then and there. Absolutely. So. I think it's a good idea to try and always learn from every op objection that comes to you yeah absolutely because i think that's one way that you can actually gain more understanding about oh yeah for life the products and you know. about the way the prospects think absolutely yeah because there's a lot of the mindset's changed a lot in the last yeah. 20 years and a, a lot of it good or bad is due to the fact that there's so much more information available now yeah. you couldn't you know when for life first started it was not as many companies out there were web savvy so you couldn't find all this information yeah. now you can find it you can google anything <laughs> everything's yeah. out there somewhere and so um, because of the fact that information is so available as we all know misinformation is just as easily available yes or misdirection or a mis misperceiving what something said because you have this thought that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, how many times we talk to people that because they take vitamins, they think they automatically know everything a transfer factor does and they they don't. It's right. it's, it's not even the same category. Not in the same realm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a completely different category. So um, anyway, so snakes in the playground, what is it all about? It's just about dealing with negativity in your life, dealing with negative people in your group, dealing with negative people in your prospecting pool, those are the snakes in your playground. And so what we wanted to do tonight was show you how to combat that. And again, I just want to reiterate the one thing that really will help with this first and foremost is to understand that negativity from other people 99% of the time has absolutely nothing to do with a personal attack on you. It has to do with something that they are going through or their experience and they're projecting right. it to you because you happen to be at that moment coming at them or representing something that ties to what that hurt that they had right. or whatever that bad experience was. And so they jump out at you because yeah. they lost money in another company. They're mad at you about it. Well, that has nothing to do with you. You weren't in that company. You weren't the one they were underneath. Right. You weren't the person that sold them on it, but they come at you because they had a bad experience. So to understand first off that you're not personally responsible for their negativity is always a good thing to start with. And then these other points I mentioned about how to deal with different people with testimonials um, with, Transferring credibility. Yes, transferring credibility, the systems and tools being something that can help alleviate some of that negative uh, experience a lot of people have with not having the support they need. And then letting them know about, uh, and you understanding yourself about how taking on that negative attitude by not protecting yourself against it, taking on the negative attitude, how it affects you personally and how it affects your psyche and the way that you function. And then on, honestly, uh, lastly, to um, make sure that you understand the the core of where they're coming from and if it's even a legitimate concern mm -hmm. or if it's even legitimate because that in and of itself can put a lot of things that one probably should be higher on the list because that in itself can nip a lot of this in the bud if you find out that the reason they're negative or the reason they're coming at you or, or not accepting of what you're offering is because of something that's not a true concern it's right. illegitimate if you can nip that in the bud right away then some of these others will just kind of are secondary so right but that's what we want to talk about tonight. We just wanted to kind of go through that um, and share that with you. I thought yeah. it was something we've had a lot of leaders that have told us that people in their group have asked us about this. What do you do when family members are negative? What do you do when people in your group are negative and other people see it on your social media page? Right. What do you do with prospects who just, just want to argue? Or what do you do with prospects who the first thing they when you say home-based business, it's a negative conversation. It turns the other way. What do you do? What do you do? It's always negative, 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 yeah. but it's all these different avenues of negative. It's not just one set avenue. So these are these, excuse me, these are things that can help you with that. So that's what I wanted to go through tonight. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for those who are on here. Um, we appreciate it. And um, I think that's just about it. That's about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. So, um, as we always do, we're going to sign off. It's Frankie Shane and Katie Lane, and we are out.